Hi everyone, welcome back. So great to see you and thank you so much for joining me today. So I'm continuing my metallic series. I'm doing a combination of techniques using metallic colour palettes. And today I'm going to do a straight pour and I'm going to do it from my egg box. So I'm going to go for a white background. I know I've been doing a lot of black backgrounds recently. So I'm going to lighten the mood. I'm going to go all white and then in the egg box, I'm going to layer up some metallic paints, probably with a little bit of black and white as well. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So let's see what we can create. OK, so I've got my egg box. As you can see, it's just a cardboard egg box and I've removed the lid. So I've got six different compartments. I've got my colours here. I've got a gold, I've got a copper and I've got a silver. And I've also got some black and white. I'm going to have a white base. I might add a little bit of black just to add in some details. But these are the three main metallic colours that I'm going to go for. So first of all, I'm going to put some of the white titanium on the base and stretch out the base colour. This is the colour that I'm going to do the pour on top of. I'm not going to stretch the white colour over the sides at this point because I'm going to add some paint to my egg box which will create more volume of paint once it's poured on top. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my white and my black and just put some of that as my starter colour in the egg box. And remember, whenever you layer something, whether it's a cut box or whatever, the paint that you put in first will be the paint that comes out last. So I've added some gold and some silver on top of the black and white puddles that we've already put into the egg box. I'm gonna add a little bit more white over that gold and then get my copper and puddle some copper on top of the white. I'm then going to add a little bit more silver into those puddles and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of the black paint on top of that silver and I'm going to take the egg box that's now full with the paint that we've just layered and I'm going to pour it over the base coat of white that we've just stretched out on our canvas. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the egg box and go from side to side. And this is going to create some interesting lines on the canvas. And then what we'll do next is stretch out this piece to create a pattern on top. I'm just using my torch to get rid of any air bubbles. Air bubbles are created when you mix your paint with your pouring medium. So the torch literally just pops those air bubbles before we stretch out the design. So when I pick up the canvas, I'm just getting a feel for where the volume of paint is. And I've decided to stretch out the design and go from side to side and allow the first lot of paint to drip down the sides. I'm then turning my canvas because what I'd like to do is I'd like to push these lines out even further. But I'm going to go from side to side as I tilt. And I call that walking the paint across the canvas. What I'm trying to do is maintain those lines as I tilt. But I just do it in a slow motion and I don't do a huge gradient 
when I lift the canvas. I'm not lifting the canvas or tilting the canvas at a steep angle. So all I'm doing is just going from side to side and moving that paint to ensure that it covers the full surface area of the canvas. And don't be scared to put your paint down, put your canvas on the table and have a look before you continue. I'm just turning the canvas round because I've got the top now covered in the paint and now I want to cover the bottom part of the canvas by tilting it from side to side and moving the paint across the canvas and down the sides. Let me know what you think about this process so far in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and a like. Here's a close up of the wet version. And I do love how the silver is the focal point in the middle and I've managed to maintain some of that silver color throughout. I really do love this color combination. I love the lines. I love the depth to this piece and I really like the movement. I love that the copper is just there at the top and feeds slowly through the piece. But I really do like that the silver is the main colour that I can see here at the moment. Obviously when I use gold, there are those times where the gold takes over a little bit. But I do love that I've managed to get that balance with the silver in. Let me know what you think, but I'm going to let this dry and I'll take you in for a close up of the dry version. And here we go, here is the dried version. And do you know what? This is definitely one of my favorites in the metallic series. I love how that silver has dried. And once I've applied a gloss varnish, those metallic colors are gonna really shimmer and shine through. I love those lines that were maintained as we stretched out this piece and the overall movement Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're enjoying the metallic series. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you really enjoy the videos, please like them and share them out. It really helps me connect with other people across YouTube who don't yet know about my channel and the work that I do. So by doing that, that really helps me connect with those two. Thank you again for all of your support. I really hope I get to see you in the next video and I hope you have a great week ahead. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.